Pink blushing. And you're watching the fucking DSP Space Gaming News. Hello, and a dented welcome to the Dent Style News Network. I'm Inked, and thank you for joining me today as we embark on this DSP news journey together. We promise to deliver the based facts, untangle the web of lies, and keep you updated on the lore. Now, Let's jump into the headlines. This week, we're inundated with trouble in the financial sector. We go to our specialist, Dark C. DeFill, to tell us more. Hey, guys, case in point, because people say, I don't understand, Phil does these Baldur Gate streams, and he always gets a lot of tips, so doesn't that mean everything's going well? The, the reason that I'm really hurting right now is the YouTube side of stuff. I'm getting little to no new memberships. I'm getting little gifted memberships. And a lot of people who used to renew their membership stopped because they think, oh, I'm just going to get a free one, which actually isn't happening anymore. It sounds like our financial expert has found a solution to the Argentinian problem. What that solution is, we do not know. Last we heard, banning the Argentinians crossing the Snort Fork border was what our specialist Dave the Dark had recommended, but its effectiveness has yet to be recorded. But they think they're going to get it now because they've been conditioned to think that because they had two months of free memberships. This is the problem. Like, I used to have this consistent YouTube side support along with tips. Now it's like, I'm just getting tips. The YouTube support is literally on a downward slope like this. And there's not much I can do about that. I can't make people contribute via that way. It sucks, but that's what I mean. Cause people are, just, are not understanding. They're like, I don't get it. Every day I look at your tips goal, you're doing good and stuff. It's like, yeah, but that's was one aspect of what I was doing. And that was great. It's great when I get a bunch of tips, it helps. But the whole YouTube support thing is almost going away. And that sucks. And I don't know how to fix that because I'm not the one that caused it to dip. It was troll activity. You know, we were actually really good with that. And then all of a sudden it just gets taken away. And it's like, so that's what I mean when I say stuff like, oh, stuff is tight. It's, it's not good right now. That's what I mean. It's the YouTube side stuff has basically gone away. And I don't know what to do to get it back because I'm doing the same stuff. You guys are telling me you like what I'm doing. You know, I'm working my butt off and I am going to be playing a variety of games. The one feedback I'm getting Get rid of all these RPGs. That's exactly what I'm doing. We're going to have variety sooner rather than later. Well, it sounds like the situation has yet to stabilize as the liquidity of the local rent and business is facing issues with funds on the back end, while its three to five regular customers seem to keep it afloat on the front end. We will see how the situation continues to develop. Please lower the amount of ads. I definitely think you should be running ads, but I'll listen to the podcast for an hour and I get six ads in that period of time. I'm getting to a point where I just watch on demand because of excessive ads and certain chatters trying to get your attention. Now, to address this, I first of all, I can't actually see the frequency of ads and that's a problem. I wish I wish I could. YouTube keeps changing the process and this is YouTube's fault and I apologize for it because I wanna be in control of my streams and I can't be. So for example, what used to happen is every time YouTube would run an ad, there would actually be a pop-up in the bottom left-hand corner of my stream dashboard, and it would say, an ad is about to run, click here to skip. And there used to be significant amounts of times I would see that, and I would say, oh, I'm going to skip that ad because I'm in the middle of something important on my podcast, or there's a cutscene, an important one going on in the game. And it, it only happens like half the time now. And I don't understand if that's a change that was intended or not, if they screwed it up, because it was gone for like a month. Then it came back, now I'm seeing it sporadically. Like literally this entire morning on the podcast, I haven't seen a single thing that said stop an ad from playing. Yeah, I know you guys probably have seen ads, right? Can you guys confirm? Hold on, let's confirm. Okay, so from my understanding, all right, how it's supposed to work, okay, is that at most, you're only supposed to get an ad every 15 minutes. At most. YouTube is not supposed to hit you with more than a, an, one ad per 15 minutes, okay? So if you're actually seeing more than that, YouTube, I think, is screwing up. And I have had a few people in the last month noticing this, um, so I don't really know what's going on with it. Now, what, what people are actually t saying to me is it seems to differ depending on where you are in the world, because remember, different regions get different ads, but also what version of YouTube you're using. Because some people are saying it's a different experience if you're watching on your desktop or PC versus if you're watching on an app, like on a TV, versus if you're using your phone. That all three are delivering different experiences. 
And some people, I guess someone just said it in the chat earlier, it seems like the mobile version for your phone is the worst, where for some reason you guys are getting way more ads, but then like on desktop, it's totally fine. Like Nico just said, it's fine for me. I've gotten like one ad so far the whole stream. And you know, the stream's been going out for what, 20 minutes, 25 minutes or so. That would make sense. Probably there's another ad coming up for you then. If it's every 15 minutes, right? Then you should be getting another ad in about 10 minutes, right? So I guess the question is, what is really going on with YouTube? Okay, because I really don't know. I, I wish I could control it. Like I said, if I saw excessive ads popping up, I would literally cook and cancel them. And now that, that feature is removed. To alleviate the floundering support, this Renton business has turned to YouTube for aid in the form of abusing YouTube's already egregious ad system for the pennies it could generate to keep one man's failing business from collapsing. Could this tactic pay off, or will it just turn the remaining customers away? Only time will tell. So I don't know. I can't even tell when you guys are seeing an ad at this point. Um... It just seems to be like a necessary evil now that YouTube is screwing this stuff up and I have to deal with it and you have to watch them. Here's the thing. Number one, I never ran those ads ever for years, correct? And then you guys said, no, we want to help support you, especially with these issues going on. Um, please run ads. So I started running them. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and now you guys are saying, well, there's too many ads. Well, it's like... <laughs> Well, I could turn it off, but then it's going to hurt the channel. Already, I'm hurting. You have to understand something. I'm hurting bad right now. I don't talk about it that often, but because those gifted memberships screwed the whole channel up, I haven't gotten them back. So we're talking, I lost a ton of revenue that I'm not regaining. And the fact that we're right now we're in RPG stagnation mode is just making things worse. You know, it would be great if I could see a resurgence with Battlefront, with Rise of the Ronin, and maybe with another game by the end of the month. But there's no guarantees that's going to happen. If I stay at the level I'm at right now, I'm already bleeding and in pain. And it's like, well, now you guys are annoyed by ads. So now just punch the wound some more. It ain't going to make things better. You know what I'm saying? It's just going to make things even worse. So. I am blown away by an unexpected visit from General Philippos Bernelio within the finance sector to give us some new information regarding the front lines of the Argentinian war effort. From the sounds of it, things have gone from bad to worse, and we need to keep an eye out as those Argentinians seem to be advancing their assault. I understand what you're saying, Tub Tubs. I wish I could control it. Trust me, if I could manually stop certain ads, I would, but it seems like that doesn't even work properly anymore. How is it that today I don't see the pop-up at all, and yesterday I was seeing it? I don't I don't get it. YouTube is all screwed up, all right? Um, so it is what it is. Now, I could turn ads, like, way lower, but what I saw, if you go to the low, because there's three versions, if you go to the low ads... It only plays an ad at most like once every half an hour. But when I was doing that, I literally saw nothing. Nothing. Seriously. So I don't even, you know, <laughs> I don't even know if that's worth it. If it, you know, if there's zero ads, it's going to hurt the channel. You know what I mean? In regards to the aid YouTube is supplying this small mom and pop business known as Burnell Productions, please leave a review. Their spokesperson, PP Burnell, had this to say. What I would recommend, again, I got to recommend this. Consider getting YouTube Premium. It is a great service. You don't ever see an ad on YouTube. Everyone who runs ads gets the credit as if you watch the ad. There's tons of benefits to it. All right? We were just talking about it yesterday. YouTube Music is an app. You get all this music if you're a YouTube Premium subscriber. It's part of the package. You know? I would definitely recommend that. Okay. So here's the thing. Tub Tubs, thank you for the feedback. I don't want my user experience being hindered by tons of ads. At this point, I don't really know how to fix it besides just turning off the ads. But if I did that, I'm going to need more support. And as you know, I already asked for it. I don't think that sitting here asking for more support all day because I turned off the ads is really going to be a beneficial thing. So it's kind of a necessary evil right now. If YouTube fixes the problem so I can disable certain ads when they happen, when they're badly timed, I will do that. But I, they've disabled that and I don't know why. Okay. That's the long and the skinny of it, folks. Our financial field specialist seems to be godsmacked at the crippling financial situation the local business has found itself in. In the current state of affairs, it seems only YouTube's ad system can save the channel unless the investors step up to the plate and open their Velcro wallets with the utmost haste. I just want to say thank you to everyone who's still coming and hanging out with me. I know these last two months have been rough, and what I mean by that is the fact that everything's an RPG, except for Tekken, right? Everything has been an RPG. Um... 
the new games that came out that were supposed to fill in the gaps that so everything wouldn't be an RPG, they sucked, so I didn't play them. I didn't play Suicide Squad, right? Um, Pal World only worked out for like a couple weeks and then it got boring, you know? So all these games that were supposed to be in between filler, I ended up skipping because they weren't interesting. And then of course, the one game that comes out that would have been different, Helldivers 2, uh, is an online co-op shooter and I don't do co-op shooter games. So it's like, oh, it's like every everything kind of just came together in an annoying way that I was just, just kept playing the same style of game over and over, you know? And now that I'm done with Tekken 8, so we have time for like Battlefront and other stuff, obviously, you know, we're going to have a little bit more variety. I'm happy about that. And I want to say thanks to those who hung in there. I know for many, you guys have been away. It's just funny because like I've been telling you guys, no exaggeration, on the podcast, I'm getting more attendance and engagement and support than when I boot up the RPGs. I actually am. The podcast is getting sometimes double the viewership of when I'm streaming an RPG. <laughs> it's like, wow. Now listen, I love RPGs. I really, really do. I'm sad that my audience doesn't like them as much as me because if my audience loved RPGs as much as I did, I'd actually probably be going crazy good right now. But the sad fact is my audience is the opposite in that regard. They're not that into RPGs and they never have been. You know, the exception would be like if I'm playing like a Bethesda game like Skyrim or something like that. But outside of that, I understand that you guys aren't that much into the RPG deal. And so I need to try to get other stuff going on. And now we're finally doing that. Okay. But thank you to those who did chill with me over the last two months. Finally, that's all changing starting this Friday that we're doing something different. Um, and thanks for your, your patience. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Um, today, please... Support the streams if you can, being that it is my final streaming day of the week. Um, admittedly, certain streams always do well and others don't. Like, for example, Baldur's Gate 3 has been doing good every single stream. We always have a good amount of engagement and support. And then I play Like a Dragon, it's the complete opposite. It's like like the deadest streams that I've ever had in my history of streaming. So it would be great to have some support today in any form, whether it's on the podcast, on the Baldur's Gate stream, on the Like a Dragon stream. I know there's audiences for all the games. It's just weird the way that it works like that, you know? <clears throat> okay. Here we have business owner and proprietor of Burnell Productions, Philip Burnell, giving us his thoughts on why his business is in such dire straits. According to Mr. Burnell, the gaming industry has become a detractor by inundating him with too many multi-hundred hour RPGs. Cohorts in his same field do not seem to share these sentiments. When we questioned Mr. Burnell on seeking outside sources of income to support his business, he had this to say. Uh, Sarah, literally no one reaches out to partner with me. No one will because the amount of people who just shit on me on the internet. I'll never get a partnership. You understand that, right? I've been around doing this longer than most content creators. I've got more experience doing it. I can attest to games better, right? I, you know, but no one cares. No one cares because of online hate. It's, just, it's that fucked up. Online toxicity is too strong, and these companies don't want to have their products associated with it, so they would never offer me that kind of stuff. Well, there you have it, folks. It seems the financial distress in the Burnell Productions offices, please leave a review, stem from damn dirty detractors. The financial woes seem to be mounting, and we will continue to follow these lies, uh, I mean developments, as they continue. In the meantime, we here at Dent Style News Network want to thank you for joining us in the financial sector, and hope you will return for our coverage of the job market. Hadley says, given your financial problems all the time, do you wish you could have done something different besides streaming? Let's make this clear. It's not financial problems. It's the fact that because I'm a full-time streamer, it's not consistent income. It could change in the snap of fingers, right? I was doing, last year was going really well. And then this whole find a way to gift memberships for a penny really has hurt me this year, okay? That's not, oh, you have financial problems. It has nothing to do with me. It's just the situation of being a streamer, your income can fluctuate because of shit like that, okay? But here's the thing, you say, this is what people say all the time, too. Oh, you know, being a content creator on the internet or being a streamer, it doesn't make sense because it's just not safe. It's not consistent. It's not guaranteed. Wouldn't you rather have a salary job where you know exactly what you're going to make and how it's going to go? Well, yeah, except for the fact that, hilariously, that's not stable either. It's the illusion of stability just so that people don't just freak out. In reality, it's much like everything in life. It's an illusion 
of safety to make you not be nervous all the time and be complacent. I've worked jobs where I had a salary. I worked at that helicopter company for four and a half years. I busted my ass. I was getting commendations at the job, awards for going above and beyond. I was being presented in the front of the, all the employees of the building, okay? And then in a few months, they laid me off. It doesn't matter. There is absolutely no 100% safety or, or stable stability in life in anything. It is an illusion, all right? Are there some jobs where it could be considered more stable? Yes, but there is absolutely no guaranteed stability at all. As you've heard our workplace analyst, David Darcy, say, the job market is unstable, unsuitable for any hopeful employee to rely on. 2008 has never ended, and we are still facing a constant state of peril. So much so that working for no one but mega corporations who have no idea who you are and pay you an ever-changing wage based on CPM and view count are just as reliable as a job you commute to for a 9 to 5 on a wage salary. I would argue the only way that you can be stable in that regard is to end up becoming filthy rich. Because once you reach a certain level of wealth, it doesn't matter what you do for the rest of your life, you're set. And a lot of people, you know, look at people up in upper positions and see that that's what I want to be. But you have to understand that's that's you're never going to attain that by hard work. You're just not. That's not how life works, right? For all of us here in the middle or lower, we're at a level where this is where we're going to be for the rest of our lives. We just have to accept it. All right. And you just do the best with what you do, whether that is a construction worker's job busting his ass to build a building, whether it's a banker who sits there as a teller pumping out money and, and cash and checks whether it's someone who does an internet-based programming job, whether it's a content creator like me pumping out videos, streams, and playing games, whatever it is. You know, it's that grind and it's that business and it's that work, but there's no stability in any of it. At any moment, you can lose your job and there's nothing you can do whatsoever. You know what I'm saying? Um, if I had known that I was going to have financial instability in this job, would I have done another job? Probably not. Why? Because there's a difference between loving what you do and having instability versus literally doing a job just for a paycheck and still having the same instability. Do you see? When I worked at the helicopter company, at first I liked what I did and then they overworked me, underpaid me and didn't appreciate me and then laid me off. So was it really worth the four and a half years of stress? No, it wasn't. That was four and a half wasted years of my life that they squandered because they misused me as an employee. Now that I get to operate my own business, this is much better. <clears throat> this is, like I said, this is absolutely the best job, the absolute best job that I've done in my, you know, in so long. So no, I wouldn't change that. Even knowing the financial instabilities I've had, I still think this is the best job I've ever done. <clears throat> According to workplace analyst David Darcy, begging, I, I mean, operating your own streaming business is a far better situation than getting into a field of employment for any other company out there, because you might get laid off. So parents, we urge you to take David's advice, and instead of sending your children to school, teach them to panhandle, or send them to clown college to ensure a successful future. He says, doesn't everyone just do the job for a paycheck? No. No. Not everyone just does a job for a paycheck. I do this job because I love games. I love social interaction. That's why I do it. And then if I can make money doing it, great. I, I did YouTube videos as a hobby for two and a half years and never monetized a single one of them. I just did it for the love of it. Then I stumbled into doing it as a job in 2011. But I made videos from 2008, 9, and 10. I got popular in 2010 before I made a dollar on a video. There you go. Tiakak says, yeah, not if you love what you do. People who hate their jobs just can't relate. And you know what? That's not me be talking down to anyone who doesn't like their job. I have 1 million percent been there in my life where I've had jobs that I just did them for the money because you have to. You have to get by. You have to provide for yourself. You have to provide for your family. You have to do what's right, right? So even if you go to work every day and you trudge it out, you know what? You deserve massive props and respect if you bust your ass for a job you don't care for because you want to provide for yourself and those around you, you get kudos and respect from me because that's a hard thing to fucking do, to push yourself to something you just don't like because you know you have to do it. You're basically living up to your responsibility 
And that's a good thing. That's discipline, right? That's a very good thing in modern society to have that level of discipline. <clears throat> As you can see, we're finishing off with some positivity from our analyst David, giving props to those who are stuck in dead-end jobs, making a bare minimum wage and hating the thing that they have to do for 8 plus hours a day because it is their responsibility. Their responsibility to pay taxes so his investors can collect their SSI checks and forward them directly to his PayPal. Props to you and thank you for suffering, so that our resident analyst never has to work. What do you mean I can't say that? And then you got an idiot like Raven who says, here's a quote from Phil. If you, I wasn't getting paid, I wouldn't be playing this game. You're right. I'd be playing other games that I like more. So what's your point? Dingus, you have none. Good job trying to nitpick a statement out of context and make me look bad when it doesn't apply to the situation. You're just an idiot. Congrats on publicly embarrassing yourself on my stream. As the educational portion of this newscast, we here at the Dense Style News Network have decided to let Burnell Productions owner and primary operator Phil Burnell give us a rundown on how being the boss of his own business works and where his investors sit on the totem pole. All jokes aside, do you ever consider your fans as your boss since your business is fan funded? If not, what title would you give them? Thanks for the content. Hashtag DSP politics to save the business. Ugh. Okay. Do you consider your fans as your boss? Okay. Fans and viewers are the customers. Okay. Not the boss, the customers. It's the same as if I operated any business, any independent business out there, whether it would be a shop where people bring in their computers and, and people repair them and put them back out. A shop where it's a sandwich shop and you make food. For customers coming in and you sell it to the customers that it's what it is the difference is it's not a paid for upfront service it's free and then you basically tip after the fact if you like the service you understand so that's really how it works so no not the boss the boss is me i'm the one who determines how to run the business what products i'm going to offer hopefully making those appealing to the customer base and stuff like that but i make my schedule i make my, my my hours i make the content i make the streams i decide what to do but a person who operates their own business and does it well listens to customer feedback and that's what i've learned to do more and more over the years take in all of your feedback tell me what it is you like and don't like about what i'm offering at my business so that I can try to cater it more towards what you want. Now, the thing is, much like any business, I can't make everyone happy all of the time. I can please this group of people today and this group of people tomorrow, but I can't just please everyone because everyone's different. Everyone's looking for something different when it comes to anything in life, right? You might like a chicken sandwich. The guy next to you might like a burger and the guy over there might want a Philly cheesesteak. And that's, you know, that the, the store can't make the best sandwich for every person. Same thing here. One person might like content that's fighting game related. One person might like RPGs. One person might like, I don't know, action games. One person might like it when I play a more challenging game where I, I fail in rage, but I persevere. One person might just like chill gaming where I was laid back and I'm more interactive with you guys. You know what I'm saying? It's all very different and it's all for different people, right? So yeah, that's the truth is, you know, it's just like any other store. I got to figure it out for myself based on feedback from you. But ultimately... I'm the boss and that's the good thing that I steer the ship I direct the content right it's not me working for someone else for them to personally benefit on the work that I'm doing I benefit from the hard work that I put in you know I don't feel underappreciated because I am the one who ultimately determines my level of success based on my level of dedication and hard work right that's the difference but no the viewers and fans are not my boss they're my customers, and I need to make sure that I'm doing what it is that they want. Because if I'm making content that nobody wants, then I'm not going to have any customers come and pay for it, right? Exactly right. David the Analyst has informed me that he agrees with everything Phil Burnell had to say here, but in my short time covering the news, I have never seen a boss who sits down to make the schedule with his investors, or have investors who are also customers who don't gain anything from investing in the company. But that just goes to show, I should stick to the news, and not business. Speaking of business, we would like to again thank each and every one of our viewers as you are the lifeblood of the Dense Style News Network. As we move on to our next segment of the show, Gaming. All right, so guys, thank you so much. 
Great, great progress tonight. See you tomorrow for more. And for those watching on demand, enjoy. See you soon. Okay. All right, guys. Well, uh, that's it for tonight. Reminder, tomorrow we are literally doing the same thing we did today a second time. So more Baldur's Gate 3 on the first game stream tomorrow and more of this tomorrow night. Uh, I hope you'll come by and hang out with me again tomorrow night for more. Um, but at this point, as you can see, like, I really like this game. And I'm happy that we're getting now closer to the end. But as you can see, I mean, literally we had... Five dollars in tips, and like probably grand total ten dollars in super chats and no memberships tonight. Well, I take it back. I guess we did get one, but it was a troll who probably did an Argentinian membership. So it kind of sucks because I really like the game, and as much as I would like to do all the content in the game, I, I mean, I, how am I going to do that? Right? You see, it's this is one of these are the worst supported streams I've ever done. Like no exaggeration, this game is the worst support I've ever gotten ever in my history of streaming for games. I've never gone $5 a whole stream. So, I just got to get through the story at this point. Am I going to do side content? Yes, I am eventually. I'm going to do, do it, but right now I think the good idea is to get through the story as much as we can. Uh, swapping jobs along the way where it makes sense. Like I said, when we get the big essence abilities for tennis player and samurai and stuff, we'll probably swap around, but uh, I don't think that dilly-dallying any further makes sense in this game. It's obvious that there's no interest in it. It sucks. It's just us, you know, 200 people who are watching it. That's it. Um, what are you going to do, right? <clears throat> so, anyway. All right, it's a good time. I still have a good time playing it, by the way. That's why I'm keeping it up. Because I get people who come to my streams and they're like, why do you keep playing the game? No one supports it. Because it's not about support. I really like the game. I like chilling with you guys and hanging out and enjoying the game with you. That's what I'm, I'm here for, you know? I'm not here just to, to print money. You know, it's okay that we have a game that isn't doing well. It really is. I just I just can't play it extended then, right? We're already at this point after tonight. I believe we're around 45 hours into it. So we'll probably just focus on story until the end when it's like last chance to do side stuff and maybe do some then. We'll see what happens. But um, tomorrow, more more of this. So tomorrow, just to make it clear, more Baldur's Gate 3 and more Like a Dragon tomorrow. We're going to get big variety on Friday when the Battlefront collection comes out. I'll be playing that all day long on Friday, okay? All right, everyone, thank you so much. Please have a good evening. Be safe. And I hope to see you tomorrow for another day of RPG fun. All right, peace out, have a good night, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye. The kids were cheering, and the adults were pissing, shitting, shooting ropes as the news of the Battlefront Classic Collection dropped. And as the day of release quickly approached, DSP eagerly awaited this collection as it would surely save the channel. Our prayers went with him as he ventured into the foray of this new release. We got a lot to discuss. We really do. Um, namely, what is going to happen here in this week, in the next couple of weeks, uh, what the next major game is that I'm playing. Um, the reason that we have to have this discussion today is because I feel like our train has gone off the rails. I really do feel that way. I feel like, sadly, as a result of many of the games that originally I was interested in and playing on playing, not being so good and me skipping them. And then, me playing some of the games that I was interested in, but sadly, they're so lengthy, it's impossible to get through them in a reasonable amount of time. We've been stuck in this endless Groundhog Day feeling of every day. It's the same stuff. It's another long RPG. It's another limitless, endless, never progressing game. And because of that, because it, I feel like the variety has kind of uh, stagnated here on the channel, this channel has stagnated. Views are down. Engagement is down. Contributions are down. Everything is down. Okay? And I can't just have that continue. The thing is, it's not like this is going to last forever. Because we're in a situation where there are some exciting, interesting games coming out. Not only in the next few weeks, but in the next few months. You know, looking long term at stuff. You know, the Elden Ring DLC. You know is going to get people excited to see me play that, among many other things coming out by the summer. But we're in March, okay? And the situation that I find myself in and all of us find ourselves in on this channel every day is, okay, it's time for stream number 37 of the same game that I've been playing for seven months. Okay, that's an exaggeration, but, you know, it's going to be samey, same kind of stuff again. Same crowd will be here, which is fine. But at one point... Will there be new exciting stuff going on? 
Oh, there's a new game coming out. Oh, guess what? Reports say it's terrible. Well, I'm not going to play it then. And then we wait. And I continue on with endless long games. And then the next game that comes out is another endless long RPG, right? And then I skip RPGs because I'm playing too many RPGs. And people complain that I skipped the RPGs, even though the RPGs that I'm playing, people are saying are too long and boring. So it's kind of like this endless cycle at this point. All right. Now, today was supposed to be a big opportunity for variety here on DSP Gaming. Why? Because yesterday the Star Wars Battlefront Classic Collection released. And this is a collection of two games from the 2000s that are well-regarded, well-respected games that everyone absolutely loves. And EA tried to recreate this lightning in a bottle back in the 2010s and failed miserably. The two Battlefront games that they made in the 2010s don't hold a candle to the originals. They've lost that fun spirit of what they're supposed to be in exchange for, like, experience and leveling systems and randomized pulls and drops, and it's just really, really weird what they went there because I think they wanted to make these microtransaction games-as-a-service games, and it didn't work, okay? Ladies and gentlemen, we here at the DSNN would like to take a moment of silence for the passing of Battlefront. Though they were once glorious beyond reproach, they have fallen to the ever-longing grasp of the consumer. DSP may not mourn its passing as we shall, but it is because one not touched by love cannot understand the loss of something so precious. So, with this collection coming out and everyone excited, wow, the originals are coming back, people got pumped, and now it came out, and apparently it's a huge flop because it's just a broken mess. You know, I guess on PC it came out uh, Wednesday night, and no one could play. People turned on their PCs, opened Steam, booted the game, and it said there were no servers. Like, how are there no servers for an online game? Apparently, their entire infrastructure crashed when they hit the switch to turn it on. So, you had like 10,000 people trying to play on three working servers that each house 64 players. You know what happens when you have 10,000 people trying to join about 180 slots? It's not a good situation, let's put it that way, okay? Now, from what I'm to understand, it's been getting better over the course of the last 48 hours or so. It is improving, and the console experience apparently hasn't been as bad as the PC experience, but the problem is first impressions are everything. And if your first impression on the internet of this game is, wow, it's a broken mess, nothing works, it's buggy, it crashes, you have to wait to get into servers endlessly, you drop from servers, it's, you know, lag. If that's what everyone heard, that's all anyone's going to think about the game or care. So I hate to say it, this game is kind of dead because it got destroyed within the first 12 hours of being on Steam, and now everyone just has turned it into the laughing, running meme and joke of the internet the last couple of days. Um, of course, me, I bought it early. You know, I bought it ahead of time and preloaded it. So me, I'm stuck with it. I bought it. In a world where anticipation meets disappointment, there exists a practice that tempts our hearts and empties our wallets. It's called pre-ordering video games. We've all been there. The trailers dazzle us, the epic battles, the breathtaking landscapes, the promise of a gaming utopia. We're sold on a vision, a glimpse of what could be. But then release day arrives. We tear open that shrink wrap, preload our pre-orders, hearts racing, and what do we find? Bugs, glitches, broken promises. Our excitement turns into frustration. The game stumbles, crashes, burns. Our dreams shatter like glass. Pre-ordering is a gamble, a roll of the dice in a rigged casino. We pay up front, hoping for a jackpot, but often end up with handfuls of regret. Remember No Man's Sky? The universe was vast, but our expectations were shattered. And Anthem, its wings were clipped before it could soar. The GTA trilogy? The Grand Theft was on your wallet all along. Friends, let's pause. Let's break this cycle. Wait, read reviews, watch gameplay. Let the dust settle before we commit, because the true danger lies not in the glitches of the broken quests. It's in the loss of hope, the fading magic of discovery. So, my fellow gamers, let's reclaim our wonder. Let's cherish the joy of surprise. Let's save our tears for in-game tragedies, not broken promises. 
the National Society of De-Denting is reaching out because sometimes the dent isn't on the outside, it's on the inside. So if you ever feel like pre-ordering a game, just look at the guy. And luckily for me, I did buy it on PlayStation. So hopefully I'm going to have at least a decent player base um, to play it with. But I don't know. Like, I don't know how it's going to work. I've even heard they basically didn't even bother adding in a modernized system to jump into multiplayer. That it's literally the same system that you used to have on PC like 20 plus years ago. Where you boot up the game and it gives you a server listing. And you have to manually select and try to join servers to play. <laughs> And that in itself could be very hit or miss. Um, it might not work, or it could you go you know, get errors and crashing. So just to get into a game could be a nightmare. I've also heard that Battlefront One and Battlefront Two are completely separated. Instead of being in one system where you just select like, oh, what's the server with the bet with you know spots or whatever? No, it basically uh, separated the experiences completely. So now you got like, you know, everyone's jumping in Battlefront Two. But no one's playing Battlefront 1 because obviously you want to play the more modernized game. But now because of that, everyone's got a Battlefront 1 with like no one playing it. So you can't play it online because like there's not enough people. So what the fuck? You bought two games in a collection and one of them essentially is unplayable. Gee, that was smart, wasn't it? Again, this is the equivalent of like when I bought the, the Capcom collection last year and there were like four versions of Darkstalkers in it and they were all separate. Well, no one's going to know what version to boot. So every time you go to play online, you got like two people playing and you can't even find them in the in the, the matches. What why did they do that for? So anyway, um I really don't know what to do. I uh, I've bought this already. I have it loaded. I just downloaded a 17 gig update patch for it because that's the day one patch because the game's so fucked up. It's essentially like half the size of the game re-downloaded and trying to fix it. Um we're playing it today. I mean, you guys were so hyped for it. You convinced me to play it all day today. Like, this was my whole day. And now we don't even know if it's going to work when I boot it up. So, we're going to try. Like, I'm not going to say, oh, well, let's just throw it away and not play it. We're going to try. But if it doesn't work, I don't even know what we got. We're going to call an audible, right? We have to. We have to do something else. And I don't like doing that because calling an audible means that half the people who would have been there for whatever I'm doing in place of what originally we were going to do, they're, they're not there. You know, like, for example, let's say we boot this up and within an hour I give up. I can't play it. It's unplayable. All right, fuck it. Let's just go play Baldur's Gate, right? Well, guess what? Most of the people who are here for Baldur's Gate are not going to be here today because they didn't know that I was playing Baldur's Gate. So now you got a different crowd, a crowd that wasn't ready for Baldur's Gate, probably not the same engaging, supportive crowd as usual, and people are upset because now, oh, I missed on Baldur's Gate. I didn't know you were playing it today. Yeah, well, I didn't either, right? And so that's a problem. Um... So I guess we have to see what happens, okay? Uh, I, I hope it works. I want to play this game. That was the whole point, is that I wanted to play something different, to bring something completely so different from everything else we're doing with these RPGs. So we have variety, so it's fun. And I think this would be a fun thing to play and to watch. It's an exciting game. It really is. This newscaster has to apologize for the preemptive mourning of Battlefront as DSP seems to be holding on to every last hope that it will save his dying business, and we can only hope he is right. After all, these games live fondly in the hearts of adult men like myself who cannot seem to let go of a time where games came out complete on launch. Let's see how this gamble pays off for the Burnell industry. Right? Because here's the thing, there's absolutely no way I can play any game right now and focus on it when I've got these lingering RPGs. They must be completed, all right? So that's the thing. We have to figure out what's the game that I should play next Friday. Now, again, if I had my choice, if I ultimately could just play whatever I wanted, I would play Dragon's Dogma 2. But I'm concerned because I'm getting feedback that I should play Dragon's Dogma 2. But I'm very concerned. We're getting out of RPGs. We're finishing 2. And now we're going to jump right into another one. Now, it is a very different style of RPG. This is an action-based RPG with different gameplay elements, right? We here at the Dense Style News Headquarters are dismayed to hear that Dragon's Dogma 2 is back on the menu. As the projected forecast for this game's performance on the DSP Space Gaming Channel does not look very good. The game itself looks fantastic, and the creative lead behind it is a legend in the industry. So our hopes are very high for the performance of the game just not the streamer. 
we will return with future projections as the stock of Dingus Dogma 2 coin changes. But I am nervous it's not going to work. Yeah, it's going to be just like everything else. I buy the game, we play it two streams, and after two streams, people are tired of it. And they say, well, oh well, and they stop showing up, they stop engaging, they stop supporting, and I might as well never play the game. All right, I'm going to be honest with everyone. You guys have sadly been de it's desensitized to streaming. You now think that every streamer should just play a hot new game for two streams and move on. And the reason that you believe that is because that's what the top streamers do, because they're all fickle. Because the reason that they're sitting here in front of you isn't to put out an entertaining broadcast, it's to print money. And because of that formula, everyone just believes that's the status quo. Okay? It's not. It's not how it's supposed to be. All right, people who actually care about games will fucking play them till completion. They don't just play a game when it's hot for two fucking streams and then drop it on its fucking head. But it seems like that's what's going on with tons of these people these days. They get a game because it's free. The publisher gives it to them for free so they can play it and not have to worry about money investment, right? They only play it for two, three streams while it's popular. And, oh, fuck that. I'm not playing it any further. They never see the end of a game. That's not who I am. That's never who I've been. I don't follow those trends. I don't do what it takes to become popular. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm sorry. That's just, it's not me. And it's never going to be me. I'm not going to change who I am to follow the trends of what the top streamers do just because they can get away with it because they're so popular. And it's sad because I think that the gaming industry is really, really faltering because of this. You can't retain interest in a game for more than a few days because every fucking person is on to the next game. If the game industry knew what was good for it, here's what it would do. Stop giving out copies to every top streamer and find five people who are going to stick with their game throughout the entirety of the game and actually showcase the full game and how good it is and give them the copies and everyone else can go fuck themselves. Because then what will happen is people will stop with this bullshit of only hyping a game for two days and then dropping it. If you're putting on an 80-hour RPG, you don't want people only knowing about the first four hours. That's right, DSP has cracked the code to the declining gaming industry, and it's you, yes, you, the hypothetical person who is only playing a fraction of a game and then discarding it because you are obviously the vast majority of people who buy games. It's a good thing this newscaster was here to discover this revelation as DSP had come up with it, for I had previously thought that it was rampant mindless consumerism like the behaviors that are on display more often than not during a DSP space gaming stream. So. That's, that's the deal, is I need to do, I need to put my foot down and we have to make a big change here in order to get stuff going, okay? Okay? Uh, I hope this is okay with you, because I know some people are going to be upset. They're going to be like, well, what happened to Final Fantasy VII? Well, what happened is people stopped watching it. That's what happened. People have completely stopped. When I play the game, it's like it's dead in here. People are falling asleep. Very few people are engaging. Uh, the support as well. Like, last time I played Final Fantasy VII, uh, all the support came in during the podcast. As soon as I booted the game, nothing... There was, that was it. It was dead. As it, I, I might as well have been sitting here just staring at a camera like this for three hours. In fact, if I actually did that, I think it would have been more exciting to some people because people just don't care about the game. You know? And that's sad because I think it's a fine game. But why am I going to continue on with a game that there is literally no interest in and I, that's what I'm getting out of my audience is I'm getting no interest in that game at all right now, um, which is sad. I think they did a good job with it. I do agree that some of the side content in the open world is very repetitive, and I'm wondering because we're only in the second side area. So if we get to the further side areas of the game and basically it's all the same shit again, like the same exact uh, you know, game loop again, the same uh, enemy fights, one mini boss, you go to those energy pools, solve the summon uh, touch pattern puzzle, which isn't even really a puzzle, it's just a time button push, like you're playing a Bomani game or whatever. If it's all the same over and over and over. Um, I don't even see the point of continuing, right? I feel like that's a game that maybe you just turbo through the story and fuck everything else because what's the point? But I don't even know if you can do that because I don't know if the game scales to your level or what, right? I don't know. Um, but yeah, that just feels like that's the situation we're in right now um, is that no one cares about Final Fantasy we're endlessly stuck in these other playthroughs and you know we need to make a change so what I need FYI is feedback of what we're playing on Friday next week 
And no matter what it is, we're going to do a premiere day of it. And then after that, it's going on hiatus until we finish these games. We must finish Baldur's Gate 3. And we absolutely must finish Like a Dragon. And we're going to work on it hardcore for the next one to two weeks until the games are done. And then we're going to come back and focus more on whatever other game we chose to play. Okay? Now, the thing is, this Battlefront collection is also a big question mark. Because it was going to be a part of the rotation. But sadly, I don't even know if it works, right? This just in from our last update at Burnell Productions. Low performing games, excluding the Immaculate Like a Dragon, will be removed from the production line for low profitability. Battlefront still on track to save the stream, but now questionable as details are released surrounding its struggles, and a new game will be put in the rotation for one or two days and then discarded. Like how those fictional popular streamers in his head operate? What? With Final Fantasy off of the roster, we can only anticipate what the oh-so-clever DSP has in store for us in the near future. Thank you all again for joining the DSNN as we continue to dig through the trash to get to the heart of this week's dented news. Now we push on to a short segment of news surrounding a staple character within the news network, Derek Ip, who seems to have managed to push DSP a little too far this week and had a not-so-pleasant interaction with his surrogate father. Derek, I'm going to say this one more time, Derek. Seriously. I, I, Derek, I've talked to you twice already tonight. I said, good night, good evening. And then I said, Derek, I already said good evening. I don't know why you're acting like I didn't say anything. And now you're acting again like I'm not saying anything. Derek, I've said good, good evening to you three times. Okay? And that's a lot to ask that you're asking me again. Can you? Can I read your comments when I literally talked to you three times? <laughs> okay? I think you need to chill out a little bit. Okay? Thank you. Okay. I received a dollar tip for a great stream so far. <clears throat> and uh, good stuff good progress i'm going to use the restroom quickly and come right back uh but guys if you enjoy these late night chill streams i would really appreciate it if you could support tonight's stream as you can see we've got five bucks and tips and one super chat and literally that's it not even a member uh it would be great if we get any kind of support tonight all right so if you could thank you so very much i'll be right back we here at the DSNN worry for DSP's mental health as the low tip streams seem to be putting him on edge, like a gambling addict without a Hogan to pull. It's strange behavior to see a father berate his adopted son like this, and we certainly hope they manage to resolve whatever it is that might be stimulating this conflict. Now for our last segment here on DSNN, we get to the day of days, the one we've been so excited for. After a week of hype and tension surrounding this title, it was seemingly born with a singular purpose, to save the business. And we get to see the Battlefront Classic Collection in all its splendor as DSB navigates its complex ancient style controls I guess on tonight, we're just doing a hangout stream, right? We're probably just doing a hangout stream. Uh, where we just chill and talk and see what you guys want to talk about because I don't think playing this another second is going to be worth it. It's such a bad game. Uh, uh, if only the game worked, it would be fun. <laughs> anyway, guys, thank you for watching. I'm sorry it sucks, and I guess we're not going to waste any more time on it. That's that. Sorry, guys. Uh, guys, well, here's the thing. I can't play Baldur's Gate 3 tonight. People would be upset. I'm not going to do Like a Dragon tonight because no one's going to show up for it. People are like, play Final Fantasy, but I, I literally told you guys I'm not doing any more Final Fantasy until we finish the other games. So I think tonight we're just going to have a hangout session. Come by tonight, and we'll chill for two hours, and we'll talk about whatever it is you guys want to talk about. And we'll, we'll just hang out, and that's it. Rather than waste time on anything that's going to fuck stuff up, we're just going to hang out tonight, okay? And then tomorrow, we start... Baldur's Gate and Like a Dragon Mania, where for the next week to two weeks, I just focus on playing them and beating them. So that way we can focus on the next new game, which will either be Dragon's Dogma 2 or Rise of the Ronin. And I need your feedback on that over the week. If you don't know what I'm talking about, check out the podcast. I revealed a whole bunch of stuff on the podcast today about changing the schedule and stuff. So please give it a look, okay? That is that, ladies and gentlemen. Final Fantasy and Ban World, quickly followed by Battlefront. The business in shambles. The war with Argentina continues and Derek remains on slip and slide watch after being humbled by his father. This week seems to have been nothing but chaos and earthquakes for the Burnell household. What followed this stream was indeed a Q&A session that lasted about two hours long, 
that mostly confirmed that Dented Dogma 2 would fill the slot for premiere and toss play as DSP tries to navigate the RPG hellhole he has created for himself. Catherine the Stallion Burnell will return to play Beyond Two Souls as per Slayer, also known as DSP's biggest K-pop fan's recommendation. Next week we ask the hard questions. Will Argentina win? Will another RPG swoop in out of nowhere and destroy DSP's business? Will Jasper get his blood work? And will Kat get her DoorDash? Tune in with us next time on DSNN, and as always, thank you.